JFT just fair and direct. Okay, hello and good morning everyone. Welcome to JFD Traders Espresso recording. Uh, with me, that is on Shauskas. Today is the 3rd of January uh, 2022. Uh, I need to get used to saying that, but uh, yeah, guys, welcome to this new year and to the first um, trading day of the um, of the year of the new year. Um, so, yep, I hope you all had a wonderful New Year celebration, um, and now you're ready to go uh, and kind of uh, take advantage of this 2022 year. Um, also, before we continue, uh, I would like to apologize for not running this one live again because. Unfortunately, um, <clears throat> the situation on my end is not really improving here. Um, again, the only thing is I can say hopefully uh, maybe next week because for this week it's not really, um, it's still going to be recording uh, recordings. Um, but um, yeah, uh, I hope I hope you'll find value in these recordings as well. Um, certainly, it's not as um, as great as, uh, as the live session, uh, but well, I'm sorry, guys, but at the, at the moment it is it is like this. So, um, so yeah, uh, apologies for any inconvenience caused. But um, yeah, uh, hopefully, like I said, next week um, uh, we can kind of uh, I can try to do something uh, about this. But um, so before we jump in into the charts, as always, um, so quick um, kind of read through. We need to have a quick read through uh, through our risk disclaimer. So yep, the content of the um, so the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation. Should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. So I'll always, as always, I'll give you a few seconds um, to read the rest, and yeah, we can continue. Okay, so um, now then also just before uh, we jump in into the charts, as always, quick mentioning of our JFD YouTube channel to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos and of course our JFD Bank website and specifically our JFD research page which is also updated on a daily basis so yep check it out here on jfdbank.com and yep click on the research tab right there on the top so now then uh, jumping into the charts, um, the first one I want to pick up here is Nikkei 225. Of course, some of the indices are uh, still, some of the markets are still closed today. Um, however, um, some will still be, well, not still, but some will be open. Um, <clears throat> I'm looking at Nikkei 225 here, I mean, this one's closed, but it will be quite interesting to see how it develops further because I've, if you remember uh, last, last year, um, we talked about this um, symmetrical triangle pattern, which so far is playing out. Um, and uh, so, yeah, if you're looking for maybe um, a better move uh, somewhere in either in either directions, um, then yeah, we'll, we'll just have to wait until we get a breakout through one of the sides here of this triangle, and then yeah, we could take it from there. So this arrow here that I've drawn pre previously probably needs to update it now, and uh, maybe I'll put it from somewhere around here. So uh, in other words, if we do get that break of this downside line, then yes, we could go for some higher levels. For the downside, um, I would say if it drops again below the 21-day EMA, then we could consider maybe a bit of a, a corrective move lower here towards that um, lower side of the triangle, and then we would take it from there. Now, <clears throat> Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index. So uh, this one, um, this one is open, or should I say was open, um, and uh, yeah, uh, sorry, is still open, still running. Um, but um, looking at this picture overall, I mean, you can still see that we are on a downtrend. Uh, we are trading below, uh, well, below this medium term downside resistance line, uh, taken from the high of the 18th of February. Now, it's a tentative one, but nevertheless, I'm keeping an eye on it just in case mm, we see a 
a strong pop to the upside here uh, because even if we do see a strong move higher then still overall it could be considered as a temporary correction before another possible leg of selling now um, from the shorter term perspective now Previously, I talked about this downside line here, also a tentative one, um, but also need to keep an eye on something like this right here. Uh, this tentative downside resistance line right here, taken from the high of the 16th of November. So, as you can see, last week we kind of broke it and then we uh, drifted back down. Today, we also opened up a little bit higher above this downside line, but then, as you can see, it's, we're now kind of trading back below this, so it seems that it's struggling. However, if you're not really comfortable with this downside line, we can ignore that. I mean, we can just, in, in general, stick to, for example, uh, in this situation, uh, stick to the 21-day EMA, which so far is doing a very good job and providing a uh, good indication. I mean, it's it's either acting as a strong area of support or resistance. In this case, it's resistance, of course. Um, but another thing to watch, of course, we well, just in case uh, it might work out or not, but well, let's keep an eye on it. And this little short-term upside support line, tentative, of course, but nevertheless, an upside support line drawn from the low of the uh, 20th of December. So let's see if this can hold. If it can, then maybe a nice little rebound here could be possible. A push maybe ab uh, above the 21-day EMA could strengthen that idea. And then, yes, so on and so on. So long story short. Um, if you're looking for a level um, for the upside, 23,605 territory could be the one to watch. And at the same time, we would be above the 21-day EMA. Um, now, uh, let me adjust a few lines here because I think that, yeah, we need to kind of update the lines here a little bit. Um, and, uh, yep, uh, yep, then, then now it's a little bit better because again um, just to, to be like I said to be more up to date this one we don't need as well um, and we can recycle that one and mark this hurdle here the low of the um, 30th of uh, December and that's roughly around that 22,990 zone so nice drop below it may open the door towards lower levels now the German index, DAX. So um, Germany will be open today according to what I see here on my calendar. Um, so the situation right now on the cash index, well, we're currently sitting at around 15,876 territory. So that's just slightly below, um, just slightly below uh, where it closed on the um, on the third thirtieth of December. Now, um, in terms of the levels, now uh, we could. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to keep an eye on this low, the 29th of December, near the 15,803 territory. A nice good drop below it may, yep, open the door towards slightly lower levels. And uh, one of the levels that I'm going to keep an eye on, or should I say, the areas I'm going to keep an eye on is this little gap here uh, and that's roughly be between the 15,593 and the 15,622 levels um, so I'm gonna keep an eye on this one maybe we could get a little bit of a hold up here however if it continues to um, if it continues to slide and, and clears that area well my next target of course is this upside support line uh, taken from the low of the 11th of December of 2020 um, so this is one of those uh, upside lines. Um, certainly, we could keep an eye on on some of, uh, like for example, on this one as well, just for the kind of sake of it. Uh, so basically, there are a bunch of upside lines which could. Um, still be considered um, but again like I said we'll go slowly on this one once we get closer to that then yes we will um, consider one of the lines here um, for the upside now this is where it's gonna be a little bit more interesting if um, if this is just seen as a temporary pause um, then well I mean keep your eyes on the high of last week right which is around here near the 15,970 let's round it up 75 zone a nice good pop above it would confirm a forthcoming higher high end then yes we could target the um, the highest point of November and that's roughly um, let me just double check very quickly roughly around the 16,290 zone and then yeah we would take it from there so that's the little game plan here for uh, for for the uh, for the 
for the German index. Um, so for the upside, like I said, I'm keeping an eye on the high of last week. For the downside, um, I'm keeping an eye on the low of the 29th of December. If we drop below it, then I will collapse. I'm not going to go radically to the downside here. No, I'm just going to keep an eye on the 21 day EMA, of course, but um, I will be looking at this uh, area that I talked about. Now, um, Jumping into Dow Jones Industrial Average now, uh, after we have managed to create a new all-time high last week, as you can see, the index uh, drifted a little bit lower here, um, started pushing nicely, uh, well, after it, 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 it didn't it didn't really push much to the downside. I would I would actually class this, this as a little correction correction before another possible leg of buying. So, or in other words, if it stays somewhere above that 21 day EMA, well, I mean, uh, still I'm not giving up on this one, and it could go further north. If you're not really comfortable with mm, with something like that, then you just can keep an eye on the current all time high near the. Uh, let's just double check it very quickly near the 30. 6,679 level and then yes a nice good pop above it would confirm a forthcoming higher high and potentially more buyers could join in um, also one of the levels that you can keep an eye on is this one right here the high of the 16th of December near the 36,189 territory so um, it also could play out nicely so it might not even drift towards that 21 day EMA it could find support somewhere around here and then yep push uh, higher but as I said before uh, the 21 day EMA is the one to uh, watch um, if we drop below it, then we will consider a larger correction to the downside, guys. Now, jumping into DXY, the dollar index. Um, so, yep, uh, here so far, I'm keeping an eye on this uh, little range here I talked about in uh, last year. Um, and um, basically, for now, I mean, it seems to be working out nicely. And uh, yep, if we're looking, um, if you're looking for some sort of a maybe a more clear indication of where it could go further, well, I would say as long as it stays in this little range, in this range, well, I mean, it could be no man's game here. And uh, if we do drop below this uh, lower side of the of this range, excuse me. If we do drop below this lower side of this range, um, yes, of course, this could open the door towards lower levels. However, given the situation what we have here, um, this could be still classed as a temporary correction before another possible leg of buying because we're still above this upside line taken from the low the 25th of May. Now, if that gets broken, certainly, yes, uh, lower levels could be met here. But um, uh, for now, for now, that's what we have here. I mean, we have a range, so let's keep an eye on it. And although maybe it's very tempting maybe to go lower right now, but um, it, because we're also below the 21 day EMA, however, uh, I'm kind of um, putting more uh, kind of uh, more weight on this range for now. Now, jumping into gold, a nice good move here um, to the upside, guys. And uh, yeah, um, pushed higher on, on, on the 31st. Um, now we're seeing a slight little corrective move lower, uh, but it was a good good move here to the, um, to the upside. We've cleared this area right here, this area between the kind of uh, 1814, 1815 levels. Um, I would say, um, yes, even if we do see a bit of a corrective move lower here, um, if it stays somewhere above that 1815 zone, then, well, another push higher could be possible. So, and of course, we're not forgetting about this upside line, which is still in play. Um, in terms of the downside, well, at this point, um, I would say if it falls below this 1814 territory somewhere, maybe we could get up class. Um, this is a, we could maybe go for a bit of a larger correction towards this upside line. But if the upside line gets broken, well, that's where it could become quite interesting for a few more. Uh, sellers, but at the moment it's still um, still on slightly on more on the positive side. Uh, WTI oil, uh, so WTI oil, um, this one is quite interesting because look at this level here, the 76.8895, the two levels, actually this area uh, between these two levels, and or in other words, if you if you want uh, the 77 level, so if you want to round it up here a little bit. So basically, the 77 territory um, 
is providing good resistance so far. I mean, you can see that this has been happening um, in the past as well. So like, for example, here uh, in July, this area did uh, act as a strong area of resistance. Then we, we go back here into 2018 that's I think the highest point of 2018 so yeah I mean this level although although um, it kind of got violated here now it seems to be uh, trying to kind of uh, you know put itself back on the map um, and uh, trying to play let's say be important again but again for well for now let's let's take it and uh, take it as it is um, yes I mean for now we can see that there is a, a bit of a hold up although we keep violating this area uh, there was a slight hold up near that 77 territory mm, um, and uh, now we're seeing a bit of a corrective move lower now that's going to be quite interesting to see if we can actually go for a bit of a larger correction uh, to the downside and uh, one thing to uh, keep in mind here um, of course, is um, is this upside support line? Let me just put this one on the chart right now. This little upside support line taken from the low of the second of December. So, um, in a way, as you can see, it has uh, quite a decent amount, uh, a decent area for a correction, a potential correction. But again, will it do that? Well, we'll just have to wait and see. Um, to, at this point, if you want to play it a little bit more safe to, towards the upside, well, keep your eyes on that 77 territory. Nice good pop. And if we do see the body of the daily candle staying above it, then yep, um, I will go higher. Um, for the downside, uh, maybe a drop below the 21-day EMA, below the 100-day EMA might do the trick here for a few more sellers and more of them could join in but uh, yeah be very careful near this upside line uh, Bitcoin Bitcoin uh, so um, let me probably clear up this chart a little bit um, and we, let's have a fresh look so overall uh, you can see in, in relation to the EMAs here uh, we are below all of the EMAs and uh, well the 21 day EMA just dropped below that 200 EM 200 EMA and uh, yeah I mean Will it go lower? Now, of course, at the moment, the indication is for the downside. Um, and uh, maybe this is just getting a slight little pause before a further move uh, lower. Because maybe, just maybe, we, could, we are seeing right now um, a, um, a range here. Um, because, it, again, that's where... Yeah, that's where the uh, crypto is currently stuck in. It's stuck in a little range, roughly between the 45,540 zone and the 51,970 level. So, um, in a way, you could keep an eye on this one, ignore any trend lines for now. And, uh, yep, if we do drop below the lower side of the range, then, yep, my next target is this little drop here on the, on the 4th of December. So, the lowest point of December near the 41,634 level. And then we would take it from there. On the other hand, um, some of you might say maybe it could be forming a double bottom here. Um, again, it might be a, po a possibility. However, if it is a double bottom, then well, wait for an, a break of the neckline, which is the upper side of that little range that I talked about. Um, AUD, uh, USD. So this one is quite interesting. Um, so I kept only these two lines here because I just wanted to keep it clear, clean. Uh, but looking at this picture, it's quite interesting. So at the moment, yes, we're pushing higher. Uh, we're trading above this little upside support line taken from the low the 6th of December. But even if we do climb higher, we do have this downside line taken from the high of the 25th of February, which could provide some resistance. So keep that in mind so in other words uh we could be bouncing around here but overall well actually overall in the short run um if we if i can express myself this way um, we are still kind of uh, climbing higher right now so in other words maybe uh in relation to the bigger picture here maybe we're just going for that larger correction right now so keep that in mind um us dollar against the turkish lira so uh this one's uh so i i did pick up on this one quite a lot um, and basically yeah so for now I mean it's just uh, it's quite interesting to observe this I mean after that drop we had at the end of December look at this I mean it started now recovering again after it bounced off perfectly from this upside support line to from the low the 7th of September 
the pair is now going for that. It seems like it wants to go for that 50% retracement of the Fibonacci. It did the 23.6, it did the 38.2, and now it's aiming for that 50%. So let's see if we can we can reach that. For now, it seems that yes, there is a good possibility that we that that could happen. So keep that in mind, guys. Um, USDJPY, another interesting one. Um, so we're seeing a nice push higher. And if you remember last year, in my last week, I talked about um, this potential idea of a rising veg pattern. But I said that um, until we do get that break of the lower side of it, then yeah, we're not really considering that as a well. We're going to keep in mind, but it's it might still be something else here. And as you can see, yes, it violated the upper side of this, if we can call it a rising veg, and uh, it pushed nicely to the upside. So what, what it means is that we can get rid of this line right here. This line can still be valid, taken from the low of the 3rd of December. So in other words, uh, for now, maybe we're just trending nicely above this upside line. Uh, overall, of course, we're also trending nicely above the bigger, uh, like the bigger, uh, the longer uh, medium term upside support line which is drawn from the uh, from the low of the 6th of January here of last year um, and uh, yeah um, we are climbing higher we're now approaching this highest point of uh, November near the uh, near the 115.52 level. So if we can clear that and we can stay above it, then that's where it's going to become quite interesting for a few more buyers. And then, yes, further acceleration to the upside could be possible. For the downside, now, um, even if it reverses suddenly to the downside, um, I would say um, keep your eyes on the uh, maybe the low of yesterday, uh, sorry, the low of today, um, which is around 115. 0.07 level. If we drop below it, maybe we could consider a bit of a, a larger correction here to the downside. Um, USD CAD now also quite interesting one. And uh, yeah, so look at this. I mean, we had a nice drop here. Um, Canadian dollar strengthened, of course, oil strengthened. So everything's kind of in line. But we're currently getting a little hold up here. And this is where I talked about uh, where's that WTI oil? This is where I talked about maybe a potential. Uh, drop here, uh, maybe a bit of a corrective move lower. And that's why I said to wait uh, for, uh, rather wait for a break above the 77 territory, uh, because maybe this could go for a bit of a larger correction to the downside. And if it does, well, we could expect the USD CAD maybe also going for a bit of a um, a larger correction here to the um, to the upside. So, um, and uh, if that's the case, now that's going to be quite interesting because. Um, I would. I wonder if this is not going to form maybe some sort of a, a head and shoulders pattern uh, where we could go maybe for the upside here, or maybe test uh, the area, maybe it's just slightly above the 21-day EMA, maybe somewhere around here near the 1.2854 zone, and then reverse back down. So again. This is a bit of speculation here, um, but I'm quite curious if we're not going to form here a right shoulder. If we do, um, well, then all eyes, of course, are going to be on the neckline, which is going to be roughly around this area near the 1.2620 or the 1.2610. So approximately around there, or in other words, maybe uh, around that 200 day EMA. So keep that in mind. Um, GBP CAD, so um, quite interesting as well. I mean, don't look at GBP CAD very often, but to be honest, it's uh, it's worth mentioning um, because, as you can see, um, a while ago when I picked up on this one, um, I marked this area, which was seen as a bit of a resistance zone. Now you can see it's acting as a perfect area of support. So if you're looking for some upside, then yes, there could be still an opportunity here, um, especially if the pair climbs back above the 200. EMA. If it does that, then uh, yep, keep your eyes on the uh, the high of December, the highest point of December, near the 1.7292 zone. And if that gets clear, then yes, uh, this will confirm a forthcoming higher high for the 
downside now um, a drop below this area of course yep could signal maybe a bit of a, a move lower so uh, keep that in mind so for now I'm keeping an eye on this 1.70 a uh, 1.70 uh, 87 level um, a nice good drop below it yep may lead to some uh, lower levels um, GBP and ZD um, now this one's quite interesting still because again if uh, last year I've talked about this one and I mentioned that uh, we're keeping an eye on the subside line taken from the low the 8th of November so yep um, so far so good um, what I also mentioned I'm, uh, I was looking at this 1.9713 territory and uh, that area well that area is um, got broken yep it acted as a fantastic area of resistance then got broken and now it's acting as a good area of support so everything's kind of according to the books um, so far like I said so good so if you're looking for the upside I mean at the moment we already quite did quite a, a decent move here higher um, but um, maybe a bit of a larger correction here could be possible but again a break of the subside line it would be needed in order to consider maybe a, a, a corrective move here lower but for the um, for the upside I'm watching this um, the highest point of December near the 1.98 zone so a nice good pop above it yep would confirm a forthcoming higher high and potentially more buyers could join in and finally euro USD um, so this one's still um, interesting but one thing for sure I can get rid of this range so it got violated here and uh, now it's no longer valid so we can get rid of this range and didn't really I have to admit didn't really quite work out but uh, well it was worth a shot so for now um, just keeping an eye on some of the barriers here um, so this barrier right here, this 1.1360 zone, um, didn't really work well. Probably this uh, area worked a little bit better. The high of the 30th of November near the 1.1383. So as you can see, we got a hold up recently around here. Um, still, overall, the trend is to the downside. So even if it pushes a little bit more to the upside, keep your eyes on this downside line. If it holds another slide could be possible guys so yep um, unfortunately uh, with euro usd that's the little game plan for it right now um, it's not very exciting to be honest but if let's say it pushes higher and breaks the downside line now this is where more excitement could come in guys and more buyers could may join in um, especially if the pair continues to trade above this downside line and uh, but don't forget what we could see here if we do break for example if we do break this downside line what we could have here is a strong push to the upside break a strong break higher maybe a push maybe towards uh, this 1.1525 zone 30 approximately around here a slight hold up uh, then a corrective move <laughs> lower and uh, it could start sliding alongside this downside line and then eventually go higher again so I mean we've seen the such scenarios happening so should not exclude one um, but yeah guys that's um, that's it for this session I really hope you found it useful and once again I do apologize for not running these live but at the moment unfortunately that's the situation for me here um, yeah it's not the um, not ideal but um, well we have to go from what we have um so yeah guys thank you very much for watching and listening i really appreciate you watching this recording um and uh, yeah i'll tomorrow i'll throw it out again so around approximately around nine uh, uh seven o'clock gmt time so yeah and then yeah we can take it from there so thank you very much guys and uh yeah happy new year bye bye